my soul There's an endless light never fleeting It's pure It's a simple truth In my soul There's an endless light never fleeting It's pure It's a simple truth filled with meaning uh, So where do I go from here? Oh, how do I offer the strength I've found? Like mist on the water clears uh, This mountain is tall but I stand my ground hey. If I love without my coverage and I don't back like the sun and go where he calls me till his work is done he'll gather his people and i'll show my faith i'll reflect his guiding light and lead the way so where do i go from here oh how do i offer the strength i've found like mist on the water clears uh, this mountain is tall but i stand We are here in New York. We're all gathered here together. And why are we here, President Lund? Well, we're here on the Hill Camorra on an exciting day when there's an eclipse about to happen, a total eclipse of the sun that's gonna happen in the next few minutes right over this very interesting place. And I'm so excited that we're here in this place under these conditions. Remember where we were when we introduced this year's theme? I am a disciple of Jesus Christ. We were standing where? In front of the temple. And we were holding umbrellas because it was raining. raining. So it's fascinating that we have cloud cover. And we knew before we came here that this was likely to be what was going to happen because that's the world that we live in. <laughs> and that's the world you live in too, where sometimes no matter how you plan, there's gonna be darkness in your life and that is okay. We don't know exactly what's gonna happen, but we've heard it might get cold and it might be dark for a little bit of time. 
How many of you remember seeing this when we started out this year in a stained glass studio and we talked about being a disciple of Jesus Christ? How do you shine so that the world can see your light? I had a thought that the hand holding the light is um, kind of like Jesus is the source of light. So he holds all the light in his palm and he can distribute it to everyone for us to share with the world. It makes me think about the warmth of the gospel. It just being able to drive away the darkness and the cold of the adversary and all the trials in our lives. The best way we can shine our light is if we all unite as children of God to shine our light to other people. Oh, I love that so much. The Doctrine and Covenants tells us that light attracts light. It's one of the products of discipleship. Discipleship brings light with it. Who can tell it's getting darker? The yeah. Mosquitoes are coming out too. And what's yeah. it feeling like right now? Cold Evening. and dark. Beginning of the night. <laughs> Something just changed. It's a lot darker. And, and what do you hear? The crickets. 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 It's like getting darker by the second. This is a weird darkness because when the sun sets, it does not get this dark this fast, does it? But if you look at the horizon, it looks like we're looking right past the shadow beyond the edge. So even in the darkest of times, if we have eyes to see, Heavenly Father's light will penetrate to us. It will help us to see the way. It reminds me of how there's always faith in the darkest of things. Wow, what a great comment. And in the darkest times of our life, we're going to feel Him. We're going to trust that light and just as quickly as this darkness fell upon us what do we know is going to happen it's going to come right back return. the light will return it's going to come back the moon is crossing in front of the sun but no matter what the moon does the sun will remain the light always returns just like it is now it is it's getting it? brighter we can see. what's happening right now the light is returning the light comes really back fast. Did anyone anticipate the light was going to come back that fast? No. Nope. This is like Faith crazy. Comes back faster than doubt. Yeah, the light came back faster than the darkness. It's amazing how much you notice when something is missing and then when it comes back, the results are immediate. Sometimes like when you're in the dark, it's just like really hard to have faith and believe that things can get better. But if you keep on reading your scriptures, going to church and have faith that Jesus will help you, he will help you and you will get out of the darkness. I got to point something out to you guys. It's still cloudy. <laughs> and you're talking about how bright and beautiful everything is. Isn't that interesting? In contrast, it just takes a little bit of light. And the light is like shining through the clouds. Like there might be some, some trials and stuff in our lives, but you can always see the light through it. There's yeah. nothing terrifying about a cloudy day, is there? The saddest thing to me is that some people don't even know that there's light. So they could be wandering in the darkness for all of their life. The restoration is that light that, that, that gives us a sense of who we are and why we're here, that we're beloved sons and daughters of Heavenly Father, and that is our purpose for our lives. And so many people in the world don't have that sense. They're just living in that darkness. This is why we need you on missions. This is why we need you already today, being a light to the people around you. We can have that faith that we talked about, that the Son of God is there. No matter what's going on in our life, no matter what it feels like, or what it, what it looks like, we can hold on to the truth that the Son is there. And you remember what He told us, I and the light of the world. It doesn't matter how dark things get. He will be there. And when we know that, when we believe that is true, the light we share is Him. With anyone we ever meet who's in darkness, the light we share is the Son of God. A disciple of Christ I will never leave him He is the truth and the life He's the 
strength in my weakness. I will shine till the whole world sees. He's the light that will set us free. Oh, I'm a disciple of Christ. A disciple of Christ. A disciple. At the end of the Book of Mormon, Moroni found his civilization in collapse. There were wars until an entire nation was destroyed. And Moroni, alone in the world, buried the record of his people, a sacred record written by prophets into the ground. And as he dropped that place into the ground, the world descended into darkness. Until we get into the 1820s, when Moroni comes again and guides the boy Joseph Smith onto this place. We're standing on the hill of Camorra. We love the opportunity we have to be here to think of that moment when a young boy came and met Moroni here and learned what his purpose was, what his call would be. And he learned it a little at a time, just like we all do. And it, it was a time of darkness. and. A, of light coming little by little into his life. And I've thought a lot about that in our moments of darkness and that light we carry with us. And I love the scripture that we read in 3 Nephi 18 that says in verse 24, therefore hold up your light that it may shine unto the world, which I love, but it's the next line that is my favorite. It says, behold, I am the light which ye shall hold up. And this year, that's what we've been doing. We've been talking about what it looks like to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. And that line from our theme song that I love so much, I will shine so the whole world can see, so they can know who he is. That's who we are disciples of. I love thinking about this verse that we have memorized throughout this year and, and what it means to me personally. I am a disciple of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I have been called of him to declare his word among his people that they might have everlasting life. What a privilege that is ours to stand as his disciples, to to be in this shoulder to shoulder together, this work that is so important and so good, but also, as you would say, so fun. We're so grateful to be a part of this with all of you to be in this together. We need you. He needs you. And we're grateful for the light that came from this place. When President Russell M. Nelson tells us that this generation came into this world with gifts, gifts to qualify them for the important work they have to do. One of those gifts is this one, that they came at a time when this record is available, where that describes the gospel of Jesus Christ with clarity in the world today. I have read this book. I know that it's true. I know that it each, as each of us find ourselves on our own hills, Camorra, places where we have to make a stand and where we need to be ourselves a light unto the world as we act as disciples of Jesus Christ, that blessings will flow into our lives, joy will fall, flow into our lives, and uh, the world will become a different place. We've been called to prepare this world for the Savior's return. Today we want to invite you, wherever you are in the world and whoever you are watching with, to share your testimony of Jesus Christ as a disciple of Jesus Christ, the one thing that you have learned about him this year. So the next thing that we're going to do is go and have the amazing opportunity of hearing from Elder Ulysses Suarez, who's coming to us from another mountaintop, this one in Brazil. Following Elder Suarez's testimony, we invite you to share your light with those that you're gathered with in whatever fashion that you've decided to do that.
my dear young men and young women from around the world, it is wonderful to be with you. Please know how much I love you, as does our Savior Jesus Christ. It is with a heart full of love and gratitude that I stand with you today near to the majestic Cristo Redentor, one of the most iconic statues in the world. This statue is a symbol of Christ's enduring love and redemption for all mankind. Its title means Christ the Redeemer. It is set on the top of a hill and overlooks the city of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. The artist who designed it wanted people to feel the peace that comes from the Savior. This is why the Savior's arms are outstretched wide as a gesture of love and invitation to come unto Him and enjoy His love. This magnificent work of art is a reminder to us all that Jesus Christ and His gospel are not meant to be hidden under a bushel. Rather, like the statue, Jesus Christ and His gospel are set on a hill where they cannot be hid. Our Heavenly Father wants all people everywhere to find His Son, Jesus Christ, and experience the peace that only He can bring in their life. How does our Heavenly Father make the light of the Savior's Gospel available to all His children in the darkening world we live in? He starts, my dear friends, by giving some of that light to each of you. You carry within you the power to make a difference, to be beacons of hope and examples of Christ-like love to those around you. When you and I were baptized, we took upon ourselves the Savior's name and promised to be a witness of Him. The Savior says to us, as He said to the disciples He called in ancient America, Hold up your light that it may shine unto the world. Behold, I am the light which ye shall hold up, that which ye have seen me do. This is both an exciting opportunity and I have responsibility, isn't it? I would love to know from your perspective, Max and Lara, why it is sometimes difficult to stand up for your belief in Christ and to shine His light to the world. And how does He support you when you do? Would you share with me? It's difficult to share the gospel because oftentimes we are afraid of the judgment of other people. But if we share the gospel, you almost feel full in your heart. It's, it's an amazing sensation. Wonderful. How about you, Lara? Sometimes we can be scared to share what we know and feel, but that's what Jesus wants us to do. He wants us to share with everyone what we know, what we feel about Him and the gospel, because it can help other people. Wonderful. Those are wonderful comments. And our heart feels the love of the Savior and the desire to share with others. Isn't true? Thank you so much for sharing your wonderful thoughts. Please know that when each of you stand up for your belief in Christ, it does not mean you are condemning or judging others. Rather, it means seeing them as God sees them and loving them as He loves them as sons and daughters of God with infinite worth and potential. It means reaching out with understanding and compassion, inviting them to experience the joy and peace that comes from following the Savior Jesus Christ. Now, may I give you a few suggestions as you strive to share the Savior's light? First, don't be afraid. Jesus Christ fearlessly shared His message of love and salvation because He knew His Father was always with Him. The same is true for you. That doesn't mean that your message will always be accepted. But I want to assure you today that when you hold up the light of the Savior, you will not be alone. Jesus Christ has made wonderful promises to those who act in faith as they stand as witness of Him to the world. He promised, I will go before your face. I will be on your right hand and on your left, and my spirit shall be in your hearts, 
and my angels round about you to bear you up. Aren't these wonderful promises? So share what you know about Jesus Christ and your love for Him without fear in conversations with friends, social media posts, or any other opportunity that comes. You will not be alone as you stand as His witness. He will be with you always. Second, exemplify the Savior's teachings in your actions. Christ taught us to love one another, to forgive freely, and to serve selflessly. By living His principles each day, we become living testimonies of His gospel, whether it is through acts of kindness, service projects, or simply being a friend to those in need. Let us show the world the transformative power of Christ's love. Please remember the adage, teach the gospel at all times, and when necessary, use words. When you do this, you will stand out like this statue in many ways. You will be seen by many. Because of your example and your light, people will want to know more about Jesus Christ. And finally, I invite you to stand firm in your faith, even when people oppose you or ridicule you. As dedicated followers of the Savior, we'll face trials and persecution like He did. But these circumstances we go through don't change the truthfulness of His gospel, because truth is not a matter of public opinion. So let us not waver in our convictions but always remember what the Lord said to Joseph Smith. Fear not what man can do, for God shall be with you forever and ever. When I was about 13 years old, a good friend from the church and I attended the same school. One day, I was in the library working with this friend on a science project. Another young man who knew about my friend's religion asked him, in front of one of the top leaders of that school, how his church differentiates from the other church. That school leader then asked my friend to respond the question from my classmate. At that moment, my friend was being tested, and consequently, me too. Would he be true to his faith? Or would he deny what he knew to be true? I am sure he felt the support from heaven at that moment to immediately say, Yes, I am a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. He then shared that both he and his parents were learning many good things in the restored Church of Jesus Christ that were making them happy. The school leader then, likely lacking information about our beliefs, seriously looked at, at him and gave him a stern warning about our church. She told him to rescue his family from those teachings. My friend respectfully listened to what she said, but remained firm in his answer and in his testimony. To my knowledge, she never questioned or challenged my friend again. My friend's attitude left a profound impression on me that day and gave me the assurance that the Lord could also give me the strength and courage to stand for the truth. With meekness and power, as He had for my friend in that moment. From that day on, the Lord has done for me exactly what He did for my friend that day, as I have stood for the truth of His gospel. I promise you, my friends, He'll do it for you. I testify that Jesus Christ is the Redeemer of the world. He loves you, and He trusts each of you as His covenant witnesses to invite God's children to come unto His Son, Jesus Christ. And I say these things in the sacred name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I'm a disciple of Christ I will never 